Welcome to this Wise Owl tutorial on creating triggered flows in Power Automate. Here's what you'll learn during this tutorial. So we'll begin by looking at an example we're going to create, which is to send an email to myself whenever anyone adds a recipe to my recipes folder, because I want to know. What you'll then do is show how to create the trigger flow. And then finally, we'll actually trigger it and test the flow to check that when somebody adds a recipe file, we get an email. That's enough for me though, I'm going to disappear and let's get started. So here's what we, you, are going to create. We're going to create a flow called monitor folder for new recipes. And the idea behind it is this. In OneDrive, there'll be a folder called recipes. And whenever somebody uploads a recipe, I want to know about it. I want to get an email telling me that the new recipe has been posted. So what we'll do is create this flow and what it will do is two things. Firstly, there will be a trigger when a file is created in OneDrive, to, which will fire. And secondly, there'll be an action to send me an email. So the way this will work is if I'm in OneDrive and somebody uh, uploads a new recipe, such as my famous lasagna recipe, then what will happen is I will get an email on the Outlook. And if you were prepared to wait about a minute, you'd see that pop up. So I'm just going to reset everything back to empty back to as it was before I started this process. And what we'll do in the rest of the tutorial is work through this example together. So to start this process, I will create a new folder within OneDrive. So I'll add a new folder. Let's call it recipes. And then if we click on that, we'll see it's completely empty. It's only just been created. So that's not surprising. What we'll now do is create a flow which will detect when something's added to that. So I'll add a new flow, great. This time it'll be an automated cloud flow because I want it to be triggered by something. And I'll call it monitor folder for new recipes. Now, what you could do is search all the triggers at this stage, but I find it easier to skip this stage and go straight into creating the flow. And then to search for my trigger within this box. So what I want to do is monitor OneDrive. So I'm going to type in OneDrive and it would seem that what I want to do is choose either when a file is created, properties only, or when a file is created. The difference between those two is the first one will just pick up on the properties, the name and the path of the file and things like that, whereas the second one will give me access to the contents of the file as well. Now I want to speed things up, so I'll just choose the first one, but actually that one won't work. The difference between it is this one here is for OneDrive for personal use, and this one is OneDrive for Business. And I know I'm only going to be able to log on for OneDrive for Business. I could make life easier by clicking on the OneDrive for Business icon at the top here to limit my actions down or triggers down to those which are relevant to just this um, set of actions. So what I want to do is choose when a file is created. I could, if I liked, don't forget, click on the eye to get a bit more information on this. The next thing I need to do is to choose the name of my folder. Now, it's no use trying to type anything into this box. It's asking for the unique identifier, the folder. That will be a special encoded unique number. No, no need to Power Automate. So instead, I need to click on this icon on the right hand side to choose a picker. Go for my root folder and expand it and then choose my recipes folder. And although that looks like I've just typed in forward slash recipes, believe me, I haven't. That's a specially encoded unique code that only Power Automate generates. I could choose show advanced options. And in this case, I think it probably makes sense to include subfolders too, because after all, I want to include files added to all the recipes folders, including any subfolders. And then I'll just collapse that up again. So now I need to say what's going to happen when somebody adds a file. And the answer is I'll send an email. So we did this in the previous tutorial. I'll send an email using Outlook. The person I'll send it to is myself, I think, so that I know I've Somebody's added a recipe for me. I think new recipe added will do fine as a subject. And for the actual body of the email, someone has added a recipe called, I can't spell recipe. And then what I want to do is put in the file name. Now here I'm going to turn to the dynamic content. And what you'll see is this list has grown. What it's allowing me to do is reference any properties created from previous triggers. So I can pick up on the file name 
and the display name of the file and the folder it was created in and various other things besides. I'm just going to choose the display name. And I'll finish by saying in the recipes folder. And that will do. It might be an idea at this stage to add in the name of the flow. Because when you have a huge number of flows running, it can be quite difficult to remember which flow created which um, email, for example. Although it is possible to find that out from the list or the flow list. So that should do for that. If I then save that, and that completes my flow. What I can now do is go back to my flows and I could try running it. So to run this flow is going to be a little different from the previous ones I've created. I need to do something to trigger it. So I'll go to OneDrive and what I'll do to choose to do is to upload a file. I'm going to upload my Amaretto cheesecake recipe. When I do that, it should trigger the flow and I should get the email appearing, but I don't. And the reason I don't is down to time. So what I need to do now is to patiently sit waiting for time to elapse. How long? Probably longer than you've got patience to watch for. Typically it's taken between 30 and 60 seconds while testing this video. So I'm going to come out to that clock and have a quick look to see if it's updated, but I don't think it will have. So I will just pause this and we'll come back in a second. So how long did we have to wait? About two minutes, I'd say. Clearly it's going to depend on the workload that Microsoft have at their server, the plan you have for 365, and all sorts of other things. But I just waited two minutes for this email to pop up. And you can see it's saying someone's added a recipe called, and then it's got the file name appearing. So it's a really useful way of telling me whenever anybody has added a new recipe. And what I could do is go back to the list of flows and for monitor folder for new recipes, I could have a look at the run history. So I can go to that. And you can see at the bottom left corner here, you've got the run history. That's when it last ran, when I added a new recipe. And what you can also do is go into editing that. And you can now test it. So what I could do is test it automatically and I could choose to trigger it with the most recent item. And what will happen if I were to do that is it would send me another email sending exactly the same information, but I'm not going to do that at the moment. So that's how triggered flows work in Power Automate.